Well, welcome back uh, for part two of Advent with Sister Sophia. Um, so last time I spoke a little bit about the comings of Christ, that uh, he came to us as a child in silence, and that uh, as we pray and profess in the creed every Sunday at Mass, right, he ascends to the Father's right hand, and he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. So his second coming at Advent, uh, at, excuse me, his second coming at um, the end of time. So we've looked at those two, and then I wanted us to focus on the third coming that St. Bernard refers to, which is his coming in our soul at every moment of every day in grace. And so in order to um, recognize those moments of his coming, we need, we need more silence in our lives. I need more silence in my lives. And I think, ironically, at Christmas time during this Advent season, our society becomes even more noisy than it normally is. So... Um, I want to maybe start with a simple quote from St. Charles Borromeo. He was a cardinal in the 16th century, and he says, and this is from the Office of Readings uh, during Advent, when we remove all obstacles to his presence, he will come at any hour and moment to dwell spiritually in our hearts. Right? When we remove all obstacles to his presence, he will come at any hour and moment to dwell spiritually in our hearts. And so just to think, perhaps um, the busyness of our hearts is an obstacle. And so during Advent, to consider that Christ's birth was hidden, right? The people in the city missed it. It was loud and they were busy and the savior of the world was born and they had no idea. But the shepherds who were um, still and silent received that message and were able to recognize the coming of the Messiah um, and so in our own hearts, when we reach Christmas, we don't want our minds and our hearts to be uh, a busy, bustling city, um, but rather we want it to be a, a place that's welcoming for the Lord, that's been actively prepared for him. So oftentimes when we think about silence, we think of it as a negation, but it's not really a negation. Spiritually speaking, it's, it's meant to be creative. It's meant to create a capacity in us um, to receive the Lord. And I don't want to receive the Lord with a small little capacity like this when perhaps through just actively seeking more silence in my life, the capacity in my heart and soul could actually be more like this to receive the Lord. So he wants to give himself fully, but it's up to us to be um, more disposed to receive that. And silence is one way we can do that. So um, we don't want him to show up on Christmas Day and in our souls It'll be, oh, sorry, there's no room at the end. <laughs> I was too busy running around doing all these things. So when we look at silence, um, maybe one other image I'd love to have in our minds is I think of, uh, I grew up in New Jersey outside of New York City, and it snowed a lot there, unlike Texas. And I think of when the snow would fall, how the whole world would slow down. It was just marvelous. It was really magical, just like the movies try to make it. Um, not just that uh, people would be off the roads, but just everything was slow and still. And even it, it seemed as though you could actually hear each individual flake of snow um, falling onto the ground. Uh, you, and it really, it caused you to slow down internally. So maybe to have that image in our minds when we think about silence, um, is that we're, the goal is to slow our minds down and our hearts down to create a capacity to recognize the Lord. So as we're, we're looking at this idea, there might be some hesitation in you. Um, we live in what some spiritual writers have recently called a tyranny of noise, and so, uh, or a dictatorship of noise. And so with that, there might be some hesitation because we all are very much um, within this culture. Uh, so... There might be fear in our hearts, this idea of hesitation of, well, I don't, I don't want silence because I don't want to face what, what I'll encounter in silence when I remove all these distractions. Or um, perhaps it's a fear of boredom that's there. Or even um, maybe there's a, an accomplishment or a perfectionism, a fear of, well, I might not know how to do it well. I don't know how to be silent. And since I don't know how to do it well, I'm just not going to do it. Um, but to, I really want to encourage you to put those aside and just say, Lord, I'm trying. I'm trying. Make good with the little effort, the, you know, with my stumbles and falls. Make, make good of it, Lord. Uh, and, and he will teach you. Uh, and I want to encourage you that when you start, it's, um, 
it's not going to be comfortable sometimes, but to stick with it and know that it's worth it, that the, the time and payoff uh, is really a good investment. So when you start, you know, what sort of practical things can you do? I'd say just choose one area of your life. So maybe, maybe it's music or radio or talk shows or, you know, whatever, um, podcasts, whatever it is, maybe choose that and say, all right, during Advent, I'm going to remove these or I'm going to limit it to 20 minutes a day. Um, somewhere think about is it when I run or go for a walk or exercise do I have music going on at that time even if it's Christian music um, could I remove that and just be in silence okay. um, or maybe when it's when you're getting ready in the morning or maybe when it's driving in the car doing errands and dropping off kids and picking up kids and going shopping all those things to look at those times and say, do I need music at that time? Do I need input? Maybe it's not music, but do I need input at that time? Um, and to take that risk of being uncomfortable and to turn it off. And when you turn it off to say, Lord, I, I, I want to hear you. Now, that doesn't mean that you need to be actively praying the whole time that you're, the music is off. Right? Um, really, I, I think just to be in the silence, it allows your mind and heart to kind of sort things out things just start to come to the surface and it, some things just start to make sense. It gives you a little orientation, like I said last time, right? Growth, healing, and, um, and orientation when we feel like we've lost our focus. So um, just to allow your mind and heart to go where they go. Um, and it doesn't have to be active prayer at that moment. If your mind moves towards prayer, then wonderful. But if not really, silence is more of a preparation for prayer rather than the time of prayer itself. Um, so we need that silence. So I challenge you to turn off your music or um, maybe something else that's concrete. Just stare at your Christmas tree lights, right? No music, no nothing, wait till the kids are in bed. There's something about that that's calming, right? And it's not just an input of, of sound, but um, it allows your whole self to become a little more still so that we can recognize when the Lord is coming to us. Personally, one of my favorite times for silence is when I'm ironing. There's something I know, like if I've got to think about something, I'm going to iron. <laughs> and then suddenly, like my thoughts just move differently and things just settle out. I become more calm. It's very strange. Um, so, you know, it doesn't have to be this incredibly pious devotional act. It really can just be, Lord, I'm removing this obstacle, right? When we remove all obstacles to his presence, he will come to us at any moment and hour. And hour to dwell spiritually in our hearts. So that's the hope there, um, to allow your mind to do those things, to have an interior stillness uh, in our hearts. So when we talk about silence, it's not just an auditory thing that we're looking at, but what are those things that cause us to lose that peace of mind and heart um, and cause us to lose that stillness? So not just music or you know podcasts, but maybe also uh, you're, you know, texting and what does that do to me internally? I can be in silence uh, physically while I'm texting, but my heart is not in silence anymore. The, the outside world comes crashing in. So it might be another thing to consider is the effects of the internet and social media on your life or just simply texting and your use of the phone. Uh, it, maybe there's times and places during Advent that you might put some boundaries on that. Um, or just maybe even ask those questions, what causes me to lose that peace in my heart um, that creates, uh, you know, is texting creating a, a blockage or an obstacle? You know, I know it's a common part of our daily communication, but also to look at, are there ways in which I can limit it to create um, more space to welcome the Lord? So I really challenge you as we conclude uh, to make silence a, a part of your life. It doesn't, it doesn't mean you have to eradicate all noise. It's impossible. You wouldn't be able to live your vocation as a, a husband and a dad or a mother and a wife um, effectively that way. So, um, but to find one area of your life that you can pick and say, um, yes, it's going to take an act of faith and an act of trust to remove this, Lord, but I do it for love of you because I want more of you in me um, and I want to create a greater space to receive you because silence is creative. So um, my prayer for you is that you'll experience this um, stillness as your mind and your heart slow down so that we don't miss it when Christ is speaking to us and those moments when he comes to us in that third coming. Uh, when, when does he come to us? Well, certainly he comes to us in the Mass and the Blessed Sacrament. Certainly he comes to us in our private prayer and the reading of Scripture, um, the Rosary. 
But even in the daily events of life, he comes to us. And if we don't have silence in our heart and mind, if we don't have that stillness, then we, then we miss his coming. He was there, he came, but we missed it. Um, in the daily events, in the conversations we have with people, things that don't go the way we wanted. Well, Lord, what are you, what are you offering me in this moment? Um, so that's really, I think, the gift that um, we can offer the Lord in this Advent season. And ultimately, it's the gift he desires to give us at Christmas and all year through. God bless you.